Hi everyone, welcome John here. Uh, today's video is going to be about scraping news articles uh, from Google News. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a short script that's going to take the information from Google News and it's going to output it to our terminal with a title and the link for us to then um, do something else with later. So if we go ahead and have a look at the Google website here, we can see that um, there is a headlines page and I just think I'm on the top stories, which I think is selected my location. If we were to go ahead and do view source, we would see that it is one big script, the whole thing, there's no information here. So we cannot use uh, requests and beautiful soup because we won't get any of this actual data back. So what we can do is that we know that this is JavaScript is we can actually use the request HTML library and we can render the page with a headless Chrome browser and then access the information that way. If I go to inspect element whilst we're here, we can see that if I hover over one of the articles, um, that each article is in an article class. So we can see that this is here. So we know that we can get to this information. If I collapse these down, there we go. So the whole thing is within this, this article class. Unfortunately, the classes are all seem to be random characters or letters or something like that. Um, so possibly not the easiest uh, way to go about getting the information. See, it's here again, there's the next one. But what we can do is we can actually find the article without using a class, and then we can just loop through the information within that. So I'll show you what I mean. So if we head over to our code, and let's make this nice and big so we can all see. Well, first thing we're going to do is we need to import the library that we need, which is uh, request HTML. So we're going to do from requests underscore HTML. We're going to import HTML session. I think it's like this. Yep. Uh, and then we'll start with our creating our session variable like this. So what this is going to do is it's just going to create ourselves a session that we can then use to open up the page. So the next thing that we want to do is we'll do r is equal to and we want to do the session dot get and then give it our URL. So we're going to use the session to go out and get the information. So let's go ahead and get our um, copy the URL which I forgot to do. This one and we'll do URL is equal to here and put that in. So, so far we are just importing the library that we need, creating our session, uh, defining our URL, and we're using that session here with the get on the URL and we're storing the, the return variable into, sorry, we're storing the information back into R. So what we want to do now is we want to actually run the render function on this so we can actually render the, render the page in the background with the browser uh, without actually bringing a browser up. So we want to do r.html dot render like this so that's just going to go ahead and open up chromium in the background load the page up so we can access the information now i always do sleep is equal to one on this uh, because i find if you don't have that second after it's done the render your script can kind of go ahead of it and you won't actually get any information back so it's always worth putting sleep is equal to one it's just a second it's not going to cause you any issues um, and for this one i'm actually going to use scroll down as well and now scroll down means that when the page is loaded up in Chromium, it's gonna hit the scroll down or sorry, the page down button this many times. So if we go back to our um, web page here and I close the inspect tool, we can see that when we get to the bottom, it starts to load more up. Every time we hit page down, we're gonna load up more things. So it's always worth paging down to the bottom for us on this website. Um, I'm gonna start with five and we'll see at the end how um, how that works. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we know that all the articles were in that article with the class of all the random letters. So we can actually just do articles is equal to and we'll call it uh, r.html.find to find everything that is an article like this. Okay, so if we actually print that back now um, Okay, let's run this and hopefully we should get some information back. Um, obviously we've got scroll down five, which means it's gonna take a little bit longer to do the rendering because we have to scroll down every time. And here we go, here we've got information. So we can see that it's brought something back for us. 
a lot of the element of the articles so with that is working we can see that we have multiple element articles here with the classes so now i know that that's actually working and in the right place we can start to look through this information and get out the specific parts that we want so if we go back to our top of our page and let's do inspect element again and let's zoom in and we can see that this is probably what we are after here h3 a clock okay right so under this h3 tag this one right here we can see that we have an a tag which has got the link which we're after but it also has the article title so we can use this this specific h3 tag to find the, all the information that we're after so to do that i'm going to do a loop and i'm going to loop through each and every single one with a for loop so we'll do four item in articles and we're going to do um, let's call it uh, call it news item uh, is equal to item.find because we're using this item here and it's an h3 tag so we're going to do h3 in there and we're going to do first is equal to true so we get the first one back because if we don't do that it will return a list um, and we won't be able to manipulate it like we want to and with our news item here which is the element that we're after the title was just the text of that so we can just do title is equal to news item dot text and the link we can do news item dot and we'll call we'll do the absolute link which will give us the full link as opposed to just the bit after the slash um, which is something we can click on from any 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 place that we put this data so now we've got those two bits of information let's print out the title and the link as well and just to speed this up and i'll do a demo demo of scroll down in a minute we'll put scroll down as equal to actually let's leave it at zero so we get the first ones only so we run this okay we've got an error and uh, that's because that should be absolute links that's why <laughs> type the right thing okay there we go so we've got here we've got an error which we're going to deal with in just a second but we've got the title and then the link underneath so one thing that is worth noting here if we go back to the uh, the website is that if we inspect these ones we'll see that the actual the way the data is they're presented is slightly different it's actually in an h4 class and we're looking in the h3 um, so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a try and accept in so when it doesn't find this information because it's in an h4 uh, we're going to skip over it because we don't want the same story four times in a row we just want the main story and we're happy to take the top link um, as the information and as the link that we want so if we come back here we can do put here try this and then accept and we're just going to pass through any exceptions for the moment so let's run that again we should hopefully get six or seven in a row there we go uh, of the information we've got so we've got no errors this time and we've got we can see there's a title and there's a link as well so that's all that information is there and it's coming back to us so now i'm going to actually put this information into a dictionary news article too many similar names don't do this and then create our dictionary like this um, title link okay put our comma there and let's create our blank list up here so let's just call this news list like that and then under here like we do so many times we can do news list dot append and let's put in our news article like that and then once outside of our loop let's print the length of our news list and see how many we've captured okay so we got 14 so if i change the scroll down and now remember this is the amount of times that when the browser is loaded in the background how many times it's going to page down if we change this to uh, let's say five let's see how many results we get back now 
So we got 38 and now that took a bit longer because of the way we're actually manipulating the page in the background, but it did give us more results. So what we'll do now is we'll get rid of the length and we'll just print the first, let's just print the first item in the list and make sure it looks like it should. Except that's not how you do that. There we go. So now we've got the first item in the list, we've got the title and the link. So that's it guys, that's how we can do that. If we run quickly back through this again, we're using request HTML as, we, as I tend to always do with any kind of script related uh, web scraping. And then we're creating our session variable, defining our URL, and then we are using our session, excuse me, don't delete all that. Then we're using our session to retrieve the information from the web page, and then we're using r.html.render to render it in the background. Again, that opens the browser up in the background for us. Uh, sleep is equal to one, means that after it's rendered, it sleeps for a second before it gives us access to the information. I find that um, uh, gets rid of any potential errors. Scroll down is five. That's how many times we are scrolling down the page with page down when it is rendered in the background. That gives us more results on pages that when you scroll to the bottom, load extra results up. All the information was in a article class. Now the class had lots of different characters at the end of it, so we couldn't go article of class this. We, we would never have got the information. So we just found all of them, created our blank list, and the information that we wanted was all in the specific H3 element. So we found the first H3 element in our article bit of information, and we've looped through and got the text for the title and the absolute link for the link, appended it to our list and we returned our news list uh, with all of the information in. So this is a nice and easy way to go ahead and scrape news articles from Google. You could then take this information and you could perhaps filter through and summarize bits that you only wanted, or maybe if it matched certain keywords, you could get it sent to your email or something along those lines or, or anything like that. Or maybe you, would, maybe you could store a big database uh, and run this once a day and just get the, the top results and just have a historic set of news articles for whatever reason. So hopefully you found this useful uh, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.